What would you do if you were the leader of a city-state and an important oracle told you that, in the face of a massive Persian invasion, either your city and people must fall or its leader must? Well, King Leonidas, the famous Spartan king, decided that he was going to fall for the greater good of his people. In the short amount of time he spent ruling, he won himself a legacy that will never be forgotten. In Leonidas' life, he did many things, but his most notable and respected action was taking a stand with 300 other warriors at the Battle of Thermopylae. Never forget the courage, leadership, and dedication of this remarkable leader, King Leonidas, who is one of the most widely known leaders of the ancient world. Now buckle up, as we take you on a trip back to the old golden days of this legendary king. But before we dive into his biography, please hit the like and subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. Let's get rolling. Who was King Leonidas? King Leonidas I was born in 540 BC. Although his father ultimately had two wives, it was the first wife who gave Leonidas life. Because he was not the firstborn, he wasn't technically considered the heir to the throne. See, he had two older brothers, Cleomenes and Darius, who were ahead of him in the line of succession. He also had another brother, Cleombrotus, who may have even been his twin, but it's unclear if that's true or not. However, he still had the chance to attend the Agogi, Sparta's public school. Here, he was trained as a warrior, beginning at the age of seven like all Spartan males. Successful completion of his studies was supposed to give him citizenship at Sparta, shaping the kind of ruler he would become. How will his teaching shape him into the leader we'll come to know? Who would have thought that Leonidas, who was not the firstborn, would eventually become king of Sparta? His older brother was groomed to take over, and despite his initial uncertainty, he still underwent Spartan training in preparation for when the time came to take over the throne. Training as a Hoplite The legacy of Leonidas was one shrouded in mystery. He became king of Sparta when his older half-brother Cleomenes I, son of the Spartan king Anaxandrides, who died circa 520 BC, perished under strangely violent circumstances in 490 BC. With no male heir left behind, Sparta set itself apart from the other Greek city-states in a number of ways. First, it was the largest at about 3,280 square miles, or 8,500 square kilometers. Also, while it was far from an equal society, Spartan women had more rights than those in most other city-states. Finally, Sparta was well known all over Greece for its superior military. King Leonidas was a master of military tactics and a skilled political leader. Every male Spartan citizen had to be trained from a young age to become a hoplite warrior of battle, armed with a round shield, spear, and iron short sword. The product of this conditioning was the finest warrior and army in ancient Greece, and most probably the world. His defensive accoutrements included a bronze crested helmet, a large round shield, and sometimes a breastplate and leg greaves, or armor. Traditionally, the Spartan hoplite wore a bright red cloak, which was considered the manliest of colors. When engaging in combat, they used the phalanx formation to protect themselves by overlapping shields. This is where rows of hoplites stood directly next to each other, so that their shields overlapped with one another. During a frontal attack, this wall of shields provided significant protection to the warriors behind it. Unfortunately, this formidable tactic ultimately failed when facing an invading Persian army at the Battle of Thermopylae in 480 BC. Xerxes and the Persian Invasion Have you heard of the city-states of ancient Greece? Two of these powerful entities, Athens and Sparta, were ruled by King Leonidas. But why was this leader so famous? It all began when Darius I of Persia attempted to invade Greece in 490 BC as part of the First Persian War. Luckily, a combined Greek force repelled them at the Battle of Marathon. Ten years later, however, Xerxes I, another son of Darius I, made another attempt at invading Greece, leading to Leonidas' fateful moment in history at the Battle of Thermopylae. What will become of Leonidas? Now, it was time to fight again. About 80,000 Persian warriors and their allies were marching into Greece. How did the Greeks respond when 80,000 Persian soldiers and their allies marched into their land? With only 7,000 troops on land, they knew they had to fight wisely. Of these 7,000 Greek troops, only 300 were Spartans. At this time, the Spartans were known to be the best Greek warriors, and they had around 8,000 hoplites, foot soldiers. However, despite being renowned for their prowess, they should not have even been fighting at all due to the ongoing sacred Canea festival. The Spartans, by custom, couldn't fight until the festival was over. Nevertheless, 300 of the finest Spartan hoplite warriors were selected to join the Greek fighting force. 
probably because they wanted the rest of the Greek city-states to see they were participating despite their festivities. But the only Spartans allowed to go were those with male heirs, as it was already assumed to be a highly dangerous, if not suicidal mission, to fight such a massive Persian force. You could even wonder, why were these warriors risking their lives for such a seemingly lost cause? However, they had no choice. Battle of Thermopylae What happened when Xerxes I led the Persian army through Greece in 480 BC? The Persian army moved south through Greece on the eastern coast, accompanied by the Persian navy moving parallel to the shore. To reach its destination at Attica, the region controlled by the city-state of Athens, the Persians needed to go through the coastal pass of Thermopylae, or the Hot Gates, so known because of the nearby sulfur springs. As such, Leonidas, leader of the Greeks, mustered a force of six to 7,000 men from many city-states, including 300 Spartans, to face the Persians at the Hot Gates. Could this small army of loyal Greeks be enough to stop the mighty Persian army, or will history repeat itself and the Persians ultimately prevail? Stay tuned. You don't want to be left out of this. Moving on, what plan did Leonidas have in store to battle the stronger and more numerous Persian army? Initially, his plan worked well, but unbeknownst to him, a route through the mountains existed that allowed the enemy to bypass his position. Once alerted to this, the Persians used it to their advantage and surrounded the Greeks. Despite being heavily outnumbered, Leonidas and his army of Spartans, Thespians and Thebans thought bravely but ultimately perished. To make matters worse, the Persians even beheaded Leonidas's corpse, an act that was considered a great dishonor by the Greeks. After the Battle What happened after Leonidas's and his brave soldiers' unconditional sacrifice? Despite the Persians' continued efforts, the Athenian navy eventually defeated them at the Battle of Salamis in September 480 BC. Yet this grand demonstration of Spartan heroism proved that the city-state was willing to put their lives on the line for the greater good. To this day, the memory of Leonidas and those loyal hoplites stands tall. Forty years after the Battle of Thermopylae, Sparta honored Leonidas' memory and bravery by retrieving what was believed to be his remains and building a shrine for him. What a fitting tribute to a heroic figure who achieved everlasting fame through his selfless sacrifice. Thanks for joining us on this incredible journey to uncover the story of King Leonidas and his 300 Spartans, who showed tremendous courage and dedication in standing up against an enemy that greatly outnumbered them. This remarkable act of self-sacrifice has gone down in history and has become etched in our hearts forever as a reminder of their unmatched courage. May their legacy live forever. Well, that marks the end of our video today. If you like this video, please like the video and subscribe to our channel to be amongst the first to know when we release a new video. Here are some videos for you to watch. See you in one of the next videos.